afternoon, everyone. It's kind of strange that um, I'm going to talk in English in, you know, in front of a lot of Japanese, but I nominated in English, so I have to. OK. Um. <laughs> Okay, um, to start with, I'm Sadaka Oki from the Earthquake Research Institute from the um, University of Tokyo. Um, to start with, I would like you to guess what this is. I guess many of um, Japanese got to know that this is the earthquake early warning system. This system informs you the intensity or the time lag till the strong motion comes. So um, every time earthquake occurs in Japan, I get this information, what well, day or night, you know, I get this information to my cell phone because I'm seismologist who is in charge of giving information to the public. So why did I become seismologist? I spend a usual day on the day of um, Kobe earthquake 17 years ago. I was a high school student in Tokyo, and I didn't know what was going on in Kobe. And when I got home, oh my gosh, all the TV programs shows this devastating disaster. A girl who is at the same age as me kept shouting to this rumble, Okasa, Okasa. She's screaming to her mom. And I was having, you know, smoking hot dinner, and I couldn't understand why I'm having this dinner and she's screaming there. We're having the same time. So that night, I decided to become a seismologist. And 11 years later, I got a doctorate degree in seismology at this university. So here's the next question to you. What is this? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, 10% of the earthquakes occur in this country. We occupy only 1% of the Earth's surface, but earthquake occurs 10 times more. So if you live in Japan, you should know about earthquakes. In other words, you are asked to have high earthquake literacy. So I made all the efforts to give information to the public. I delivered lectures to school kids and actually um, those mid-school students, they're from um, Tohoku regions. So I taught them what the tsunami is and what they should do to escape from tsunami a year before the Tohoku earthquake. So let's think about the literacy, earthquake literacy. In 2004, magnitude 9 earthquake hit Sumatra. It caused 200,000 casualties which is 10 times as many as we had in Japan. A research revealed that only 30% of the people in Indonesia had known the relation between earthquake and tsunami. This number goes to 97% in our country, even before the Tohoku earthquake. Of course, we have high river walls and also the tsunami warning system. But I thought, yes, I was right. The earthquake literacy is one of the most important things to save our lives. That's what I thought. But I was completely defeated when I saw this movie. This is a movie um, shot on a day in the city of Miyako. Actually, there's a three meter, only three meter warning was issued. And this city is surrounded by eight meter high river wall. And as you can see, 10 meter high tsunami attacked the city. Actually, um, this is the hometown of next speaker's father. So I, you know, as a seismologist, I really feel guilty for them. Um, there are more than 100 people died in this area. So, you know, every single person in this city know the relation between tsunami and earthquake. But the three meter high, the three meter issue, the warning, 
made people vulnerable, and eight meter high river wall masked people from this massive tsunami. So more than a week, I kept Googling their names from the evacuees list. You know, did I tell them right thing? I should have told them the warning can be underestimated or the tsunami can easily overtop the river wall. You know, researchers should tell the deficit of our knowledge or the limit of current sciences. So the earthquake literacy can decrease the casualties from 200,000 to 20,000, but it alone cannot bring it to zero. So we all have to go beyond the literacy. And I still don't know what I can do. I still don't know, I still don't know the answer. But I found a ray of hope in school education. In Japan, um, we have several times of earthquake drill a year at schools. Normally, um, there's an announcement saying, earthquake drill, earthquake drill, cover yourself under your desk, something like that. And kids are gonna do like this. Okay, let's see what will happen in real earthquake. So this is the movie from the um, Kobe earthquake. It was shot by the security camera at the convenience store. and then blackout. So, well, who can go to the broadcasting room with this, you know, strong motion? And even though he reached there, you know, what, what he gonna do with this blackout? It won't work. So, I suggested arranging the education, the earthquake drill to let them think what they should do to positively protect their lives by themselves. The traditional earthquake drill is the training for kids to follow what teachers said. The brand new standard of earthquake drill should be to let them decide what they should do to protect their lives. So I had this you know, earthquake drill in, a, in any kind of situation, such as you know, in the music room or library without any desks. And they themselves think what they should do. After two years of having this kind of earthquake drill, the Tohoku earthquake attacked this school. And in the next slide, I'll show the movie, which was sh shot by chance on that day at this school. They're in the gym preparing for the graduation ceremony. So they did the right thing to protect their lives immediately. So this is going to be my last slide. Um, the March 11th earthquake pointed a finger straight at me, saying, neither the knowledge or the interpretation saved people's life. And I know I'm still halfway to my goal, but I bet the school education for kids. Because in 10 years, they'll be 22 years old, and some of them become school teachers. And in another 10 years, they'll be 32 years old, and many of them got married, and many of them become parents. Unlike me, this is another serious problem, but I'm gonna not talk about this today. <laughs> so I bet the school education for kids, so in 20, in 20 years, the potential of Japan against disaster will be totally different 
would be much, much better than what it is right now. And here I promise that I won't waste 20,000 of lives lost on March 11th. Thank you.